Hello and welcome to the Feisty News for Women. I am T. Erica. I present important women's issues and fearless feminine voices disrupting our society. Today is June 6, 2022. Here is the Feisty News for Women. The Spanish government is set to pass a law offering three days of menstrual leave a month for workers who experience severe period pain. This law affirms that when the problem of severe period pain cannot be solved medically, it is a temporary disability. Japan, South Korea, and Zambia are among the few countries already offering menstrual leave, and Spain will be the first Western nation to follow suit. Spanish radio station Cadena SCR reports that the mandate for menstrual leave is among a set of proposals protecting reproductive health that have been introduced into Spanish society, which also include enabling girls ages 16 and 17 to have an abortion without having to get permission from their parents, ensuring that educational institutions provide feminine hygiene products when necessary, and eliminating the sales tax on these products. In another form of movement for women, this April, Spain created legislation to prevent anti-abortion activists from harassing women who seek abortions. Those who attempt to aggressively convince women not to terminate their pregnancies could face up to a year behind bars. Damn, we see you, Spain. This is amazing. Thank you for protecting the reproductive rights of women. In other news, on the first day of Pride Month, Representatives in Ohio passed House Bill 151, which bans all transgender students from playing high school and college sports and requires genital exams if gender is questioned. This year alone, U.S. state lawmakers have posed 238 bills that would limit the rights of LGBTQ Americans, with nearly half of them targeting transgender people's access to play sports, use bathrooms that correspond with their gender identity, and receive health and gender affirming health care. Proponents of these bills say they're about protecting children from being exposed to wayward ideas, parental rights to raise children free from outside influence, and religious freedom. Opponents of the bills contend they're discriminatory and are more about scoring political points with conservative voters. I truly believe the attack on transgender expression is a reflection of the insecurity of men desperate to uphold patriarchal ideas that place them as leaders of society by default. This rush to affirm gender by genitals is happening because men are afraid that if gender becomes blurred, they will lose the automatic authority they never deserved in the first place. When gender becomes blurred, men will have to prove they have capabilities for leadership instead of just being given the leadership positions, and they will be judged on merit instead of their sex. When gender is blurred, the authority over others men have been taught that they need in order to val validate themselves in this world will dissipate, and they have no idea how to measure their life without it. Each bill they pass limiting transgender acceptance in our society is a cry for help. And I say, let them cry. You can't stop it. In other news, a woman in India committed suicide after her new husband harassed and abused her because he wanted a more expensive dowry. Dowries, which are illegal but still common in India, are wedding gifts given by the bride's family to the groom's family after they are married. Apparently in India, even to this day, men believe they're entitled to be given gifts and money just for marrying a woman. Well, let's welcome our feisty correspondent from India, Manikiran. Manikiran, tell us about the issue with the dowry in India and how this tradition is hurting women. Every day, around 20 women die in India because of dowry. And these are just the official numbers. The unofficial numbers can be way more because most of the violence is unreported. Uh, also, the number of women who are alive but are harassed mentally, physically, and sexually every day because of dowry, we really don't have any record of that. And uh, the thing is that dowry... Uh, puts a lot of pressure on women and uh, their families because uh, instead of spending money on a girl's education, uh, people start saving money when a daughter is born for their marriage. 
and a lot of uh, cases of female feticide occur in india because of dowry because people are poor they cannot afford to give dowry so they consider it better to kill a baby girl when she is born instead of letting her live and um, in india it has been a criminal uh, offense since 1961 to accept dowry so whenever a marriage takes place they don't call it dowry they call it gifts for the woman but we all really know what it is and there's no marriage happening without that in no culture uh, it doesn't matter which family background you're coming from rich or poor everyone is expected to give dowry wow Okay, I understand that everyone is expected to give dowries to the man traditionally, but how does this tradition make a woman want to commit suicide? Uh Tiarica, for example, when uh, a girl and a boy uh decide to get married, actually their families decide to get married, there's uh some amount of uh, dowry that is initially decided. It can be in form of gold, it can be a car, it can be land, it can be a house, it can be uh anything electronic appliances and in most of the cases the girl's family actually gives all those things to the guy and or his family before the wedding itself but what happens is uh, when they get married uh, most of the times the family of the boy and the boy himself they get a lot um, they get greedy and they start asking for more so the woman and her family have already given all of their resources uh, that they had and they don't have anything more to give so then the mental physical and the sexual abuse starts uh this happens uh, a lot and uh many times women end up committing suicide or they're burnt alive by their in-laws because of this uh yeah i know that's horrific but uh that is what is happening are you for real yeah what what This actually happens. I don't know what to say because it's actually very common in India, and like you're telling me to explain it to you, but I don't know how to explain because it's like you know you're asking me to t- explain something that is just happening, like how a tree is growing or how are you cooking food because it is happening. Do you, do you get what I'm trying to say? It's such a normal process that has been, uh, uh, I don't know, taught to the society and. Uh, it's happening yeah it's it's for real and like this particular case that we're talking about over here uh this is a police officer himself who has been arrested so a police officer who is in charge of maintaining law and order in society is harassing his uh, wife and her family for um, one or two years for dowry so you can see how how it is how inbuilt it is in the society that uh, men think it is their right to get dowry and as much as they want and if they are a government official then they think they deserve more because they have a government job so so you're saying that when a man wants to marry a woman her family must give him gifts and then he accepts the gifts but if he wants more and her family can't provide it he abuses her until she commits suicide or his family burns her alive thank you maniki don for sharing this very sad news about indian culture something has to change i don't know what we can do about it well it's time for a break crazy people are crazy until you find yourself joining them and where's the last place you ever want to drop your phone meet two women who face both of these obstacles right after the break don't miss it finding the right care for your loved one is anything but easy i'm angela olea registered nurse and founder of assisted living locators We're a free community-based senior care referral and placement service that has been matchmaking families with caring providers for over a decade. If you're seeking the best quality care at an affordable cost, don't get overwhelmed with all of the care options. We can reduce your stress. Call our free service today and let one of our local certified elder care advisors assess your loved one's needs 
and provide you with the personalized assistance in locating the best Alzheimer's or dementia care, assisted living homes or communities, nursing homes or in-home care. We have the answers. Call us today at 1-800-267-7816 or check us out online at assistedlivinglocators.com. We're here to help you. Welcome back. I am T. Erica with the feisty news for women. Girl, guess what? Did you hear about the woman who fell into a public toilet and had to call 911 to help her get out? Oh my gosh, she was at the top of Mount Walker in the Olympic National Forest, just northwest of Seattle, when she had to use the restroom. So she went into the nearest public toilet, which happens to be a vault toilet, which is a non-flush toilet where the container collects the waste is buried under the ground. So she's in the toilet and using her phone. And when she drops the phone into the toilet, she tries to grab it out of the waist, but she can't reach it. So she tries to use her dog leash to fish the phone out. And when that doesn't work, she uses the dog leash to tie herself to the toilet and lower herself into the waist to get the phone. But the leash breaks and she had falls head first into the waist. She tried for 15 minutes to get out of the on her own, but she couldn't. So she had to call 911. When the firemen arrived, they pulled her out, hosed her down, and strongly advised that she seek medical attention after being covered in human waste. Ew! If you drop your phone in the toilet, would you try to climb down there and get it out? Not me. It'll be time to shop for a new phone. Oh my God. In other news, we're living the feisty life, and sometimes our experiences take us in directions we would never, ever imagine. Let's meet a woman who actually became one of the crazy people she used to laugh at. Edwina, what happened that led to your most interesting life experience? Hi, I'm Edwina and I believe in Bigfoot. The reason is I wasn't a believer before. I thought Bigfoot people were crazy and I was out with a on a drive one night and uh, one ran in front of our car. It was very dark, so we had the brights on and this massive creature that had to have been between eight and nine foot tall, stepped into the high beams of our car. And um, like I said, between eight and nine feet tall, at least 750 pounds, covered in hair, massive, massive creature. Um, no neck, just long arms, and it was probably one of the most terrifying things that had ever happened to me. Uh, it really took about two weeks for my brain to compute what it had seen. And um, after that, I started uh, doing research online and found a group near the area where um, I had had this experience and spoke to them and although i was quite the um, camper and outdoors woman they took me around and showed me signs and symbols around the forest that had completely um, gone past me i didn't realize that the things that i was seeing were not natural and um, from then on i decided to dive in head first and um, i joined the group and there were um, wives in the group, but there weren't very many, you know, females who were like heading up things. And I had a research site for four years, which is called a habituation site or gifting, where I left things for the Bigfoots, um, the clan, which is the entire family. And um, in turn, they would take these things and um, communicate to me by uh, bringing things back that they wanted more of and leaving me various gifts. And um, it got to the point where uh, if my daughter and I were camping, they would come to our campsite in the middle of the night, stand right up against the tent. And um, I think the thing that changed the whole, these are big, scary creatures that are gonna eat me, um, to believing that they were intelligent was um, one night we were out um, setting up recordings. It was probably March, it was maybe 15 degrees, um, 2.30 in the morning, a closed campground area. We were packing up to leave and about 10 feet away, I heard this howl 
that just made the hairs on my neck stand up. It was so close. We ran to the car, um, realized we had left the recorders behind, went back and got them. By the time I got home, I started listening to this recording. Not only did I hear that howl, but afterwards was about 30 seconds of speech where this creature had spoken to me. And I, I felt this, I heard this like yearning in its voice, like, don't go, I'm having fun watching you. And um, I actually sent it in to a linguist that works for shows like uh, Finding Bigfoot. And um, they actually said that it was the real deal. So um, from that moment on, I believe they were just curious creatures who just want respect and um, they just kind of watch us, want to watch us once in a while. I never thought in a million years I would be a Bigfoot researcher. I'm a mom, I'm a grandmother, and um, I write about sex for a living. So I never thought that I would be a Bigfoot researcher, nor did I ever think I would believe in Bigfoot. Well, okay, Edwina, for some reason, I believe you, but you won't catch me in the woods, so I'll never find out myself. <laughs> well. Thank you for watching the Feisty News for Women. I am T. Erica. Remember, be feisty. Women must be seen and heard. Welcome to the Feisty, feisty. feisty.